here's our waveform and we're going to talk about now how the actual analog to digital converter converts this analog waveform into a digital representation of that waveform. There are two terms that we're going to use that help us to define this analog waveform digitally. They are sample rate and bit depth. So what is sample rate? Sample rate is how many times per second the analog to digital converter is looking at, analyzing, and or taking a snapshot of that waveform. So if this is our signal that's going to be converted ever so often based on our sample rate, we are going to take a snapshot of what's happening, like that. Now there are a certain amount of times that we need to sample this waveform per second for it to be considered professional quality audio. And that sample rate is 44,100 times per second. Our analog to digital converter needs to be taking snapshots of our waveform. And you may go, that's a lot of times per second to sample. And indeed it is a lot of times. But that is the amount of times that has been determined that we need to sample a piece of audio to get a good representation of that signal. Now there are other standard rates as well. But all of them are at or above 44,100 times per second. They are all derivatives of these two numbers. So another common sample rate would be 88,200 times. Another sample rate that's common would be 96,000 times. You can see these are each multiples of two. If you go up here again, you come up with 102, 192,000 times. These are all derivatives of this number, of these two numbers. So that is our sample rate. That tells us how many times a second we are going to take a look or a snapshot of this waveform. So here, we're going to put a little point. Here, we're going to go up here and we're going to create a little point. Here, creating a little point. And we connect the dots like this. And you can see we can get a oh, fairly good representation of what that waveform is actually doing based on that minimum sample rate of 44,100 times per second that we are sampling the audio. There's other ways to write sample rate numbers. A lot of times you'll see these sample rates written down like this. 44.1, 88.2, 88.3, 88.4, 48 kilohertz, 96, and 192. Now essentially what they're doing here is they're telling us how many times per second we are going to sample this audio. So this is the same as 44,100 hertz, but if we call it kilohertz, kilo is 1,000. So 44,100 kilo or I'm sorry, 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz is the exact same figure or number. 44 kilohertz is the exact same number as 48,000 hertz or times a second. So that's an, two different ways to write the same thing. So a lot of times you'll see 44.1 or you'll also see it written 44,100 as long as they have the right representation behind them, then it's the exact same number. So that is the sample rate. What that gives us, that tells us the quality of our recording as it relates to frequency. Frequency quality. So the higher the sample rate, the higher the frequencies we'll be able to represent. So if, we're, if we have a very low sample rate, we're not going to be able to 
represent the higher frequencies very well. So low sample rate, our recording is going to start sounding more and more like a telephone conversation than a really good stereo recording. To plot all of these points along here, we need a point along this horizontal axis, and we need points along these vertical axis to be able to plot individual points representing this waveform. So bit depth gives us the amplitude representation of our waveform. Volume, or it may be called also dynamic range. So there are some real common bit depths that we use in professional audio. Those bit depths are 16-bit and 24-bit. And recently, we've also been able to access and, utilized and utilize something called 32-bit floating point. We're not going to really worry about that one. The two most common types of bit depth are 16 and 24 bits. Okay, so all of your CDs that you have at home that you play on a CD player are all a specific sample rate and bit depth. CD players can only play CDs if they're recorded at 44.1 and 16 bit. That's what's considered CD quality audio. There are other audio types that are higher bit depths and higher sample rates, but the basis or the bottom line is 44.1 and 16-bit. Anything with sample rates or bit depths less than that are not considered professional quality audio. So I mentioned just a minute ago that the bit depth then gives us how many levels of volume we have along this vertical axis. So the more levels or volumes that we have, the better our representation of this wave, the higher resolution we're going to get of our electrical wave that we are sampling with our analog to digital converter. So bit depth gives us dynamic range, volume, or amplitude, and sample rate gives us frequency or the quality of the frequencies that we can represent. So to plot each of these points, we need a vertical and a horizontal axis to plot each of these points along here. And then that gives us a good representation of what this waveform is doing. We can essentially tie these dot to dots and create a digital representation of our waveform. That's what the analog to digital converter does. And that's how it does it, by using the sample rate and bit depth uh, to create a digital representation of our wave. How did they determine how many times per second we need to sample our audio and at what different levels, so our bit depth, to give us stereo or to give us good quality audio? And the answer is, first thing that they had to do was to look at how humans hear, what frequencies we can hear. So let's talk about that for a minute. Humans can hear only certain frequencies. If this is a horizontal line representing what we can hear, the bottom at which we can hear is 20 hertz, or cycles per second. The top frequency that we can hear, theoretically, is 20,000 cycles per second. Everybody really has a different hearing range. Um, as you age, you start losing your high ability to detect high frequencies. Okay? Literally, everybody starts dropping their ability to hear these higher frequencies at different points. But for some reason, they came up with 20 to 20,000 hertz is what we can hear. You can also abbreviate this as 20 kilohertz. 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz are the exact same numbers. So that's what we as humans can hear. So there's 400 hertz. So we said that our hearing range could hear from 20 hertz 
up to 20,000 hertz, and that's theoretical. A lot of it's based on what your speakers can produce, as well as what you can hear. So, based on your speakers, you may not be able to hear these low frequencies. And as you go higher, they get obnoxiously louder. Okay, there's 10, 11, 12,000 hertz. And that's where I start losing it. Some of you might be able to hear up into here. So that's what we can hear. 20 hertz to roughly 20,000 hertz theoretically. The reason that we're discussing this is because we wanted to figure out how the scientists came up with the amount that they need to sample the audio to get an accurate representation of that analog waveform. And there was a theorem that they used. It has two names, the Nyquist theorem or the sampling theorem. And the Nyquist or the sampling theorem basically states that if you want to accurately represent a waveform digitally, you have to sample it at least two times the highest frequency that you can hear. Okay? That's one way to state it. So we said we could hear 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So if we want to be able to represent that high frequency, 20 kilohertz, we've got to multiply it at least two times to get a good representation of that waveform. So if we want to represent 20,000 hertz, we have to multiply that times two. That's going to give us 40,000 hertz or 40 kilohertz. And because it says at least two times, they added a little bit more another 4,100 hertz or 4.1 kilohertz. And so that's how they came up with 44,100 times per second that they were going to analyze that analog waveform to create a digital, an accurate digital representation is they had to use that highest frequency and multiply it by at least two times. And that is called the Nyquist or Sampling Theorem.